welcome back for another video. So FPL's just dropped a big announcement for the 2024-25 season. There's a bunch of changes to the game coming up which can have a massive impact on strategy and scoring. We'll be covering everything you need to know right here every game all season so make sure you subscribe and welcome to any new subscribers and welcome back to the old. So the first bit of news is that you can roll up to 5 free transfers now, which was previously always 2 transfers maximum. If you're new to the game, every game week you get 1 free transfer, and if you don't use it then the next week you get 2 free transfers. This was previously the limit on how many transfers you can have, but you can now have up to 5 which is a major change. It's like having a mini wildcard, as you can make massive changes to your team in 5 transfers, or obviously you could even make 6 from minus 4, or 7 from minus 8 etc. Previously, if you used your wildcard or your free hit with two free transfers in the bank, they'd be wiped and you'd be back to one free transfer, and this is no longer the case either. So for example, you could have four free transfers, and then you could free hit into a double or a blank game week, and then you could spend the four free transfers the week after to make a ton of changes to your team. This season, or in the future as well, we might have a double game week followed immediately by a blank game week, which would be a good example of how to navigate those with extra transfers. I think this change will probably make it easier to hop off some of the premium assets onto another. For example, if you've got Haaland in the game week 1, you need a minimum of 2 free transfers to change him to a premium midfielder like Salah if you don't have him as well. But you're likely going to find a better set of transfers in 3 moves, like you could spend the extra spare money if you went Haaland to Salah, or vice versa if you need to find the money to go Salah to Haaland then the extra move will be helpful. Realistically, it's not often that we're in a position where our team's perfect and you're able to burn a transfer, personally anyway. But from a strategic point of view, there's going to be situations where it's worth weighing up whether the slight gains you get from a free transfer could be worth avoiding to hopefully gain more in a future game week with more free transfers. One thing's for sure, it's a massive change to the game's strategy and we're going to talk about it lots during the season. I'll definitely be aiming to try and put myself in a position at some point where I've got at least three free transfers or maybe more, but it does take some very good squad management to be in that position. Another announcement, a new chip's going to be added to FPL. The last time they changed chips was 2017 when all-out attack was replaced by the free here, so it's a rare occurrence. We're not going to get the chip till January, so that's about all we know. I doubt they're going to bring back all-out attack, which let you play 2-5-3. It's going to be something like Limitless with unlimited budget for one week, or they'll implement one of the FPL challenges from last season, like double points for strikers for one week. You might have noticed some visual changes on the top menu as well. From this season, FPL is going to have a new look, or in a nutshell, it's going to be the FPL Challenge interface from last season, which will be implemented into the main game. Do you think it looks better or worse? I'm nostalgic for the old look personally, but I'm sure I'll get used to it eventually. There's also been some minor changes to scoring. Goalkeeper goals are very rare. I actually did a video on this before, and on average it happens about every 5 years. So goalkeeper goals are now worth 10 points rather than 6. The bonus point systems had some tweaks as well. Safe penalties are now worth 9 BPS, down from 15. Keepers and defenders conceding a goal is now minus 4 BPS per goal. Goal line clearances are plus 3 BPS, and fouls won are plus 1 BPS, and each shot on target is worth 2 BPS. Presumably these changes are going to balance up bonus points a bit better. I doubt the BPS changes are going to have any effect on players that we select or avoid to be honest. In case you missed it, outside of FPL, the FA Cup schedule is going to be different this season moving forwards, which is going to result in fewer blank and double game weeks, and those blanks and doubles will be smaller now. It might mean we never see the biggest score of all time beaten, which was 226 points back in 2016. This isn't a direct change to FPL's rules or anything like that, but something to be aware of. It's probably going to hurt the strategy side of the game a bit, but this will at least be counteracted with the introduction of 5 free transfers, and hopefully the mystery chip adds a good new element to the game. For those of you that enjoy FPL Challenge, they're going to announce some new features next week as well. I'm interested to know what you think of these changes, leave a comment below. Do you like the 5 free transfers or is it too many or should they have left it as two? Anyway, I'm absolutely buzzing for the new season, not long to go. If you enjoyed the summary, hit subscribe. FPL's launch is imminent and there's loads of great content to come here. See you soon for the next one.